Welcome back to Philadelphia. Do you know who's playing by now? The Carolina Panthers, the Philadelphia Eagles, their third consecutive NFC Championship game. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. Three of the luckiest guys in the world sitting right here in front of you, Joe Buck. Troy Aikman and Chris Collinsworth and for the Eagles they've got a lot of pressure two years ago they lose in St. Louis last year they lose at home to Tampa Bay and now they've got a third crack at this thing it's against Carolina yeah there is a lot of pressure on this Eagles team and there should be after three straight trips to the NFC championship game they do need a trip to the Super Bowl but this is also a team that's gotten used to dealing with that pressure after the 0-2 start there wasn't a lot of love here in the city of brotherly love and the guy who's under the most pressure of course their quarterback Donovan McNabb you talk with John Fox the head coach of the Carolina Panthers he says guys it's about as simple as this if we can make Donovan McNabb have a bad day we have a great chance of winning this football game so the pressure clearly right on his shoulders yeah and as much as everybody expected the Philadelphia Eagles to be playing in this championship game the most unlikely of teams has been the Carolina Panthers and you look at how this team's been able to win games this season we all know about the way they've been able to run the football with Stephen Davis we know about the way they play great defense but what has gone unnoticed has been the play of Jake DeLone from the time that he came in in the second half and threw three touchdown passes in the season opener against Jacksonville this guy has been winning football games for this team and it has continued here throughout the playoffs we had an opportunity to talk to Jake last night. He's confident, he's excited, and you get the impression, Joe, that Jake's not even real sure that he's playing in such a big ball game and he's just ready to get out there and play. Folks, on the heels of that, do not make the mistake if the Carolina Panthers win this game, this is because the Philadelphia Eagles necessarily did something wrong. They are good enough to win this game. They're a better team than when these two teams met at the end of November. And for Philadelphia, they are dying to get over this final hurdle and get to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1980, that season, for this Philadelphia Eagle franchise. We remind you to answer your Sprint virtual coach question by using your PCS Vision phone from Sprint. Are you smiling? <laughs> Or logging on to FoxSports.com. That being said, we cannot wait for the start of this game, and neither can these fans. Welcoming the Carolina Panthers into Philadelphia. The Panthers knew what to expect. Now they're experiencing it. Right here in the heart of it all, after a thrilling win in St. Louis, trying to knock off the Eagles to get to Super Bowl 38. McNabb, the Eagles, Delhomme, the Panthers, and now our public address announcer. Now to sing the national anthem, please welcome your American Idol and J Records recording artist, Ruben Stoddard. And you see by the dawn's early What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we
Is this destiny? Is it destiny for the Panthers after losing their biggest weapon, yet overcoming a challenge in hostile territory and prevailing in a fashion that could go down in history? Or is it destiny for the Eagles, who beat a legend while another emerged right before our eyes and assured 4th and 26 will resonate forever in Philadelphia? Which team's destiny will be fulfilled? The journey continues next. What a scene. What a scene as the precipitation has ended, the wind and the cold persists. And down on the floor of this beautiful new stadium, Lincoln Financial Field, is our very own Pam Oliver. It's been so fun. Carolina absolutely loving this underdog thing. It's been some time and Quentin Buckner comes up to me to ask me why everybody hates Carolina. He wasn't really interested in the answer, but I tell you, his line mate, Chris Jenkins, figures the best way to win this game is to control the line of scrimmage. He wants a Super Bowl ring in the world. toss the Carolina Panthers they will receive and if Troy the Eagles should advance to the Super Bowl you hope I do and I know you do and I know you do Chris that Andy Reid gets the recognition he deserves as a top coach in the NFL and I don't think he has received that even though here they are for their third straight year I would agree with that Joe and you look at what he's done since taking over this Philadelphia Eagle franchise the only team in the NFL to have gone to four consecutive playoff games now here they are this year in their third consecutive championship game very impressive the job he's done. Kevin Dyson impressive catch lost the football and somehow able to grab it out of midair and the Carolina Panthers survive a scare and keep the football that'll make people in Carolina gulp well you know it's just the pressure of the moment and actually his own man Rod Smart's the one that came back and hit him and almost knocked the football out good thing it was a receiver Kevin Dyson able to corral that baby back in just listen. Huge hole for Stephen Davis, and he plows ahead to the 35-yard line, a gain of nine. An interesting first look coming out with a full house backfield, all three backs in the backfield. And it really creates some problems for the defense. But for Stephen Davis, what a tremendous year he has had. Over 1,400 yards, and he missed two games this season. A lot of question as to whether or not he was going to be able to play in this one with the hip flexor. But don't get many moments in a championship game. No surprise to me he's out there. Second and one. Again, first down out to the 40. You always think that a coach is playing possum when a guy gets injured like Stephen Davis did a week ago injured late in the first half pulled the quad and the pull actually goes all the way up into the hip area. He said he was OK on Friday in practice. He said they were going to give it a shot today and so far so good. Yeah Joe and I saw him out before the game in warm ups working that leg pretty hard to see how it was feeling and he looked good to me. The question is when he gets out in open field and has to open that thing up will it hold up for him. The Carolina Panthers would be excited if he gets a chance to check that out. Again. Darwin Walker. Gain of two. Up front, for the most part, it's been a healthy offensive line protecting Jake DeLone. And a club record 26 sacks allowed. That's it. And they open up the holes for that big guy run the ball, Stephen Davis who had a franchise record 1,444 yards. And that offensive line, Joe, probably has not gotten enough credit this season either. They've made dramatic improvements from where they were a year ago and obviously had a big year blocking for Stephen Davis. Deshaun Foster in the backfield. Blitz. DeLong's going to keep it. Far side of the field wide open, and Jake DeLong 
who rushed 41 times during the regular season and amassed a total of 43 yards picks up 10. Yeah and he didn't mean to rush that one that was a busted play in the backfield coming out just somehow missed the handoff with the blitz coming and Jake turned around and finding a lot of open field and running for his life here Troy. Yeah I agree I mean it looked like Jake DeLome wanted to hand the ball off to Deshaun Foster but Deshaun Foster didn't look like he was anticipating the handoff coming to him. Toss to Foster. Good run. Impressive opening drive so far. A gain of five. Up front defensively, they are light. Not in size, but in depth. They've had injuries hit this front four all year long. They even had N.D. Kalu go down with a sprained foot on Friday. It was good enough to play. And Chris, we talked about this last week. They really miss Carlos Emmons, their strong side linebacker. And you can tell already with the way that the Carolina Panthers are running the football against them, he was their best player against the run. Also, should talk about Troy Vincent, the fact that he's had a hip flexor and this is his first game back. Davis, short of the first down, third down coming up. Guys, this has really been Philadelphia's defense all year. They give up a lot of yards, a lot of yards on the ground, a lot of yards between the 20s, but not a lot of points. That's right. They've done a great job keeping teams out of the end zone, and you touched on the injury to Troy Vincent. One of the big keys in this ball game is going to be how Philadelphia matches up against Steve Smith. Troy Vincent will be guarding him most of the day, and we'll get a good test early as to how well that hip flexor holds up. Dalom, his wide receiver is wide open. That's Smith driving on Troy Vincent. Picks up seven and a first down. Well, the first indicator is not very good for Troy Vincent. I'm sure this thing's a little bit tight, and I'm sure he's a little nervous that he hasn't been out there. Plus the fact that Steve Smith's one of the best receivers in the league. You can see Steve Smith just getting him completely flipped around there. And uh, Troy Vincent having to scramble back to make the play. Yeah, it does not look like Troy Vincent is moving real well on that. It looked like he was a little gimp trying to make the move. And as you mentioned, Steve Smith, one of the quickest receivers in the National Football League. And they have they didn't find a way to be able to slow him down in the first meeting. And that's going to be a key here today. Movement on the right side of the offensive line. So this will cost Carolina five. Bernie Kukar is our referee. All start, 69 offense, five yard penalty, two first down. And after that opening playoff game against Dallas in which they didn't have any penalties at all, they had almost 100 yards in penalties last week against the Rams, and Kevin Donnelly had one drive where he had three himself and not off to a great start here. Yeah, last week, four false starts against the Rams, obviously a noisy dome, but this stadium here, no less noisy today. Davis on a toss. Gets the five back. Second down and ten coming up. I thought it was interesting to hear from Steve Smith and talking about when the Panthers run the ball early, he gets a good indication as to how a guy like Troy Vincent's going to play him. And then on the first third down they face, they go to Smith working on Vincent, and he got a seven-yard completion. That's a good young receiver starting to mature within the game because you're right they started out running the football Troy Vincent was on him and pressing him and he's setting him up he's running different things trying to see what he has to do in order to beat him on the routes safe throw Davis not much Bobby Taylor helping on the tackle gain of only two but you can see already the significance of that initial five yard penalty the Carolina Panthers are a team that needs to stay on course they need to stay with that second and six and third and two and stay on schedule so you take them on that first play now you move them back first and 15 now they're in a third and long situation and this is where the Eagles love to blitz love to come after Jake DeLome and he did not handle the pressure very well in their first game well and this is what Jim Johnson wanted to do they didn't do a very good job against Green Bay getting them into third and long but they have here blitz DeLome dumps it Down. But 
I do think if you're Carolina, you've got to feel good about the way you take the opening kickoff and you move the football down the field. The penalty set them back, but a nice opening drive by the Carolina Panthers. And that, now comes the interesting story with John Casey coming onto the field. He essentially cost the Panthers the game the first time around, missing three field goals and an extra point, and he comes out for his opening shot of about 50 yards here. Swirling wind. And no surprise with the little direct snap to Casey who just pooches it down. Just outside the 10. John Casey will go after the pregame warm-ups to his head coach, John Fox, and say, I'm comfortable from this spot going in this direction. That was too long. Casey drops it down to the 11, and the Eagles hold on defense. No score. Decent opening drive for the Carolina Panthers, but they come away with nothing. And then Jake DeLong going over to the sideline, and he needed a couple of guys to calm him down. Yeah, and he told us when he went into his first playoff game against Dallas that his emotions were pretty high. He expected the same here today, and Rodney Pete has been a real stabilizing force for him through these playoff games. Empty backfield, and Chad Lewis makes the catch out to the 15-yard line. And just to set the stage for special teams and what could happen it wasn't that big of a surprise watching during the pregame warm-ups and that's certainly easy to say now the wind is really blowing from our left to our right that could change but trying a 50 yarder if you're Casey with the wind in this joint not an easy opening kick so they decided to pooch it down to the 11 and now it's second down and six for Philadelphia. flag on the play and Donovan McNabb has a first down but we'll check the marker Chris you asked Donovan McNabb a question before the last game and I thought it was appropriate and almost prophetic this appears to be against Carolina first down Philadelphia and that was in regard to the running game of Donovan McNabb. You said, do you, do you make it a concerted effort? 21 on the defense and for the base. That is the running play. We'll add five yards to the end of the run. First down. So a first down Philadelphia. Here's a look at the foul. And Mike Turgovac, Chris, saw the same thing that we saw last week, and that was a Donovan McNabb that was early trying to establish his ground game. Well, it just makes it so much harder on the defense. You have to play another guy and take somebody out of coverage to spy him. On first down, handoff is to Buckalter. And Corral Buckalter is out to the 34. The offensive line is missing a starter from the beginning of the season, Jermaine Mayberry. Otherwise, it is a physical, and at least on the right side, with Runyon, a mean group. The skill positions, Buckhalter is on the list, but we will see a lot of Deuce Staley. We're going to see a lot more of Deuce Staley from what we saw last week. They felt going back and reviewing that game against Green Bay, they did not utilize the running game enough. On second down, Buckhalter again running right. Brought down right at the marker. First down, Philadelphia. Well, that was the one thing that Andy Reid was a little disappointed in himself last week in the game against the Packers. Yes, they were behind 14 to nothing, but he really felt like he abandoned his running game much too soon in that one, and he vowed to get back. And when Deuce Staley lined up in the backfield for the very first play of the game, you could hear the crowd yell, Deuce, Deuce. I mean, they were anxious to see him run the football, too. clock is at zero and it's a delay game Philadelphia delay a game offense five yard penalty still first off Bill Parcells will tell you there is no better front four 
across the NFL than this group. Yeah, and they really have their work cut out for them here today. They've got to be holding their lanes as they rush Donovan McNabb. They're very conscious, conscious of him trying to scramble up inside. In addition to that, they're going to have to play some of the screen passes that Philadelphia likes to throw so often. McNabb fires wide open is L.J. Smith, the tight end. Out to the 45, a gain of 12. Well, John Welburn, who missed the first game between these two, going up against Chris Rucker right here, or Chris Jenkins, just does a great job battling. Hands to the face, a bit of a fist fight, but Welburn is one of those guys that is a physical, nasty player, will do whatever it takes to get the job done. And Chris Jenkins, without question, the best player on this defensive line. McNabb dumps it off. Buckhalter out of the backfield, down inside the 35. You know, pretty well designed play right there. You can see Donovan McNabb come out on play action, and Terry Cousin. Their nickel corner turns and runs. He's right here, and that's what opens up the lane underneath there for Corell Buckhalter. Dan Morgan getting in there late. They've got to assign a linebacker to either Corell Buckhalter or Deuce Staley to watch for them leaking out late. Staley gets the carry. He runs into a wall. A guy named Buckner was part of that wall. No game. The one thing that the Philadelphia Eagles had a lot of success with the first time these two teams met was that late delay by the back by the tight end because as the Panthers drop back into that cover two zone of theirs all of a sudden somebody leaking out late is very difficult for a zone defense to try and close on because you have to play those passing lanes in behind. Turns it into a positive play down to the 29 yard line again. You know, right there, the Philadelphia Eagles were trying to run a little bit of a natural pick. Carolina wants to come up and challenge these wide receivers. That's something that we have not seen in previous games. Defenses against these wideouts for Philadelphia. Historically, they have had problems getting off the jam and press coverage. Carolina has confidence in their young corners that they can come up and, and match up against these Philadelphia wideouts. Third and long, you might see a blitz try and knock them out of field goal range here. McNabb in trouble and down by Witherspoon. Witherspoon came on a bit of a delay and a sack back to the 36 yard line. And he had some time again to throw the football, but once again, Carolina comes up, jams the wideouts. They're not giving them free releases, not to mention they got safety help over the top, call that two man, and it's just extremely difficult to get open against that. Donovan was unable to find anybody. Witherspoon gets in and makes the play. And once again, someone other than a defensive lineman making the sack. Last week, the Packers got him eight time only once by a defensive lineman, so you have to blitz Donovan. Smith. Takes it around the nine. Mike Turgovac will tell you he doesn't like to send the little guys to bring Donovan McNabb down on a blitz. It's one of the big guys, Witherspoon. And that did not Philadelphia out of field goal range. A little bending, no breaking for each defense. And there is the classy Sam Mills, diagnosed with cancer of the small intestine in August. Mark Fields, Hodgkin's disease, also diagnosed in August. They are both honorary captains for today's game. Delon fires and hits Hoover, his fullback. And Hoover is forced out of bounds just inside the 15-yard line, a gain of six. Well, when Chad Lewis blocks, Will Witherspoon right here knows that he can blitz. Just a green dog. He's going to come as soon as he sees the protection, and now he takes off and he goes gets McNabb. Green dog. What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, to the general public, what in the world does that mean? It means a really bad hot dog. Okay. Green dog. Second down and four. 
Jalom <laughs> has time to the sideline and over everybody with Goings the closest to it. Boy, that had a shot right there, Troy. He had to throw it away at the last second, but it looked like Goings was going to sneak in behind the defender. And if he'd have just thrown it up the field, I think he'd have had him. Yeah, I think he did. Jake just didn't hang on to the ball quite long enough. And if you look at what's happened so far in this game, Carolina takes the opening possession. They drive it down. They establish field position. Their defense unable to hold Philadelphia. Philadelphia comes back down. This is a critical third down in order to maintain field position and keep this drive alive. Empty backfield. Expect the Eagles to blitz here. Extra men come, Goings, tremendous catch, and it depends on the spot. Look to be just shy of first down yardage. And there's no decision to be made here other than the obvious, which is punted. Jim Johnson doesn't fool around when he sees those empty backfields. Nine times out of ten, he's going to come try and get Jake in that situation. Punt team is already on the field for Carolina. They're going to bring the chains, but it looked like Goings was about half a yard shot. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to pick up the first down here. And a little surprising that Carolina comes out, throws it three consecutive downs, considering the fact that they have had success on that first possession running the football. You know, we saw that shot of Jim Johnson. When you consider that they've lost Burgess, Grasmanis, Jamal Green, Hollis Thomas, Carlos Emmons. Early in the season, they didn't have Dawkins. They didn't have Vincent the last three games before today. They didn't have Bobby Taylor early in the season. Who does a better job than Jim Johnson? Well, there's no question. I mean, he's taken the players that he's had available to him, and he's molded this into a competitive group. And we can talk about the yards that they've given up on the run game and the various things, but the bottom line is they've kept people out of the end zone. Here's a valuable weapon for Carolina, Todd Sauerbrock. Let's see how valuable. Valuable. It's a tough punt into the wind, and from inside the 35, Mahe goes just about nowhere. Intense game. Third time around for this group. Andy Reid, gentlemen, take a breath. No score, first quarter. One minute, one minute remaining in the first quarter here in Philadelphia. There is no score. Sunday, February 8th, the NFL's best will gather together for the 2004 Pro Bowl as the NFL celebrates 25 years in Hawaii. Donovan McNabb, Stephen Davis, Peyton Manning lead the NFL's brightest stars in the 2004 NFL Pro Bowl Sunday, February 8th. Second possession for Philadelphia. Down the middle of the field and incomplete. Past the outstretched hands of L.J. Smith, the rookie tight end, second down. Well, Joe, I think if there's a weakness in this coverage, when Carolina goes to their two deep coverage and they give help to their corners, there are seams down the middle of the field. As we saw last week in the game against St. Louis, when the Rams had their big plays against this team passing the ball, it was pre predominantly that seam route. Those safeties are going to have to keep an eye on it. They have to play that a little tighter. Not only for the tight ends down the field, but it also opens up a lot of room for Donovan McNabb to run. Deuce Staley. Full head of steam and fights to the 46. Well, Freddie Mitchell or Fred X or whatever Sultan you want to Sultan of Slot, whatever you want to talk about, does a pretty good job on the outside blocking this time. Of course, Freddie Mitchell, if you missed the game last week, it was fourth and 26 and he made the play. But Deuce Staley is a guy that, despite the fact Brian Westbrook is out, he says at least there's some positive. He said, I have gotten so much more practice time and so much more of a chance to get in a rhythm as a back. You've really seen improvement out of Deuce Staley the last few months. This could be it for the first quarter. There's the middle of the field. McNabb looks to the sideline, waited for Staley, and Deuce Staley can't come down with it. What a perfect. 
perfect throw from Donovan McNabb, a guy who fields a lot of criticism for missing open receivers. That one's on Staley. And how about the protection by Philadelphia up front? They're doubling Julius Peppers on the outside. Nobody can get a pass rusher doubling Chris Jenkins inside a defensive tackle as well. And Donovan had a long time to get a good look on that. Missed out on a great opportunity. And as well as Deuce Staley's been playing, you can't help but think that would have been Brian Westbrook had he been healthy. And Brian Westbrook would have had greater separation and probably made that catch. Well, their big matchup differential and an advantage they have is Westbrook, but he is injured and out for the rest of the playoffs. Staley was down the field, had a shot at a long completion from Donovan McNabb. Could not come down with it. One quarter is history. No score in Philly. Back after this. Brad Childress is the offensive coordinator for Philadelphia. Going over charts and recipes over on the sideline. Donovan listening, and now it's Jake DeLone. Third possession for Carolina, no score. Second quarter. Foster in the backfield. Running up the middle, he gets it to the 25. Go back to that last third down and one play and Dan Morgan trying to run with Deuce Staley and that's a mismatch right there. I mean Dan Dan Morgan is one of the fastest linebackers on this team but you see the separation that Deuce Staley is able to get. We've already seen Dan Morgan in coverage a couple times and if Carolina is going to play that man to man coverage then that's the that's the matchups they're going to have a linebacker on Deuce Staley. It looks like he's ready to yak over there. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I didn't know if you could say yak on TV yeah, or not, though. Yeah, she can. Stephen Davis, second down and six. Out to the 31. Gain of five, and he looks to be a half yard shy of a first down. But we're seeing the Carolina Panthers getting back to what they do best and what the Philadelphia Eagles do worst. I mean, everybody knew coming in to this game that it was going to be strength against strength, and no question that for the Panthers, the reason they're here is because of that guy right there, Stephen Davis, and his play and the running ability behind this big offensive line. And for the Eagles, they have really struggled trying to stop the run. Third and one. Little pitch. That's Foster. Lost the football. It's picked up by Wiggins. And Wiggins then fell forward. The ball came out and Wiggins, Jermaine Wiggins, was right there for Carolina and was on top of it. Well, you see how loose he is with the ball right there. He just gets stoned right there at the line. Ike Reese coming up and putting the hit on him along with Michael Lewis. And Deshaun Foster, if there is a complaint about what he does, it gets loose with the football. Man. Boy, that was a big time hit by Ike Reese. That's like having George Foreman hit you in the jaw. That was a knockout punch. That's what happens sometimes when you're running with the football. If you get hit right underneath the chin, your arms just drop. That was a knockout blow that time by Ike Reese. George Foreman and his grill hitting you in the face. <laughs> on first down now. Pass is caught by Davis. Great hands by Stephen Davis, and he has a first down inside Philadelphia territory. Simino went for the ball. Davis got the catch. Bad leg at all. He has a gain of 21 yards. And that, Joe, was an absolute perfect pass by Jake DeLome. This is outstanding coverage by Mark Simino. You watch him right here, and the coverage, there's not a lot of places he can put that ball. He puts it high and away, and that's about the only place that Mark Simino wouldn't have been able to get a hand on it. Great protection up front that time as well. That's what the running game does. Then the play action off of it, almost impossible to get a pass rush. Huge push up front by Darwin Walker, and he almost took himself out of the play as Foster carries it for six. Walker can't come across any faster and still be onside. What a great play by Chris Mangum, the fullback, to pick this one up, or the H-back, I should say, as he's coming in motion. Going to come back in and just basically kick him out at that point right there and open things up. It was one of those that the penetration almost got there, but Mangum saw him. Well, and that's why Darwin Walker was able to get up the field. They run the trap on him with Mangum, and so there's nobody there to initially stop his charge. Good job by Chris Mangum. 
Second down and five. It's Foster, who literally slipped down in the draft because of his penchant for fumbling. Picking up three. Now, either Jake DeLone is the greatest American actor in the category of your Nicholson, your De Niro, <laughs> your Keanu Reeves, or what? Go on with it, man. I, or this guy's the most unassuming quarterback in the history of the NFL playing in an NFC championship game. That's pretty refreshing, isn't it? It is. I mean, you talk about a young man who's just happy to be playing, and we asked him, it's got to be nice that you're finally getting some of the accolades that you so richly deserve. He said, I'm just happy that my wide receivers are getting noticed. Blitz, third and two. DeLong fires and has his big receiver, Masin Muhammad. He's got a first down inside the 24. And I really think the story of this game so far is the fact that the last time these two teams played, I didn't think Jake and I didn't think Carolina did a very good job against the blitz of the Philadelphia Eagles. And what we've seen so far is they've been able to pick it up. And when they can pick it up, these two receivers can win the battles down the field one on one. But it all started up front without that protection. That play doesn't happen. I got to tell you, though, Chris, I've never seen Troy Vincent give that kind of cushion against a guy like Musa Muhammad. Musa Muhammad's not known for his speed. You would think Vincent would be charging him a little bit more. You got to question how healthy he is. Blitz coming. Panthers pick it up. Jump ball. Touchdown. And who is it? Their big man, Musin Muhammad. Their big body receiver is there on the waiting end with that lollipop falling from the sky, and it's 6-0 Carolina. And Bobby Taylor, who had a nightmarish game against the Carolina Panthers the last time they played, Looks like he's off to the same sort of start here. Musin Muhammad, a big receiver, has the ability to simply go up for the jump ball. And Jake was telling us the other night, he said, I like just throwing the ball up sometimes. I like giving my guys a chance to make a play. And Musin comes down with it. Well, you saw Brian Dawkins. He was pointing at his own chest. He felt he got turned around on that play as well. He should have been in a better position to help make a play and help Bobby Taylor out. The underthrown ball, the underthrown deep ball, probably the toughest play in man-to-man -to -man coverage. The Eagles like the size matchup of the big Bobby Taylor against Masin Muhammad. But this time it's Muhammad, who has had a very good postseason on the receiving end. Quiet down, everybody. It's 7-0 Carolina here in Philadelphia. Dawkins saying it's on me. It's on the board, and it's seven points for Carolina. Masin Muhammad, who's been around this team since the 96 season, Second year in franchise history when the Carolina Panthers then got to the NFC Championship game, beating Dallas, but then losing to the Green Bay Packers. Is on the receiving end, and you look at the safety, very good Brian Dawkins, who got spun around. And for Muhammad, he doubled his numbers from the first half of the season to the second half, and he's kept that role going right into the playoffs. Nine catches for 173 yards coming in in the two playoff games. So not only Musin Muhammad, but Steve Smith, all these wide receivers because Jake is starting to get so comfortable. Yeah, and Musin Muhammad, early in the season, him and Jake DeLome really did not have any chemistry because if you remember, it was Rodney Pete that was getting all of the reps in training camp. And so Jake DeLome, once he took over there in the second half of that opener, that's when he started to get to throw routes to Musin Muhammad and to Steve Smith. And it has taken some time, but there's no question that as they entered these playoffs, boy, Jake has developed some real chemistry with both of those guys. And Muhammad's not one of those guys that's going to dazzle you with your speed out there. You know, he's just one of those big body, get rebound position, jump up and catch the ball just like he did there. Ricky Manning is holding the ball on the tee. And Thrash will take it from outside the tent. He's been a big weapon for Philadelphia in the postseason, really all season. And a return of 22 yards. Masin Muhammad puts up the first points of the evening here in Philadelphia to make his second year head coach awfully happy. 7 up. When Brian Dawkins gets turned around, there's just nothing he can do. That underthrown ball. The minute you turn your back on it and the receiver makes a break and comes back to the football, 
just no way of locating it and trying to come back and make a play. And Brian Dawkins, for the great play he made last week, knows he's one behind in this game. <laughs> he has not stopped since getting over to the sideline, pacing, pounding that sideline. 7-0 Carolina. And the Eagles hand it off to Buckle. He's out to the 35, a game of two. Fox tomorrow, the phenomenon that changed music and television forever, at least it did in my house, returns for his third season. Be there when American Idol takes the first look at some of the very best and, of course, some of the very worst. American Idol, an all-new season. Get in at the start. Begins tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Second down and eight. Pass is gunned and caught. First down yardage to James Thrash. And so the pressure has begun again on the Philadelphia Eagles. What pressure? Ah, uh, you know, this is one of those places that you can almost feel it. it. It's a strange kind of a town, as excited as you would think that they would be. The general conversation was this week, oh my goodness, what happens if we lose? And you just don't expect that when you come to a championship game, and there is just a great deal of pressure on this football team. He'll be worn out by the time the defense gets back on the field. Still ticked off. Pressure. McNabb buys time, fires, and it is incomplete. Kingston had it, had two cracks at it. And it'll be second and ten. And Donovan McNabb absolutely got pounded at the end of this play. Al Wallace, everybody held their lanes and gave Donovan nowhere to run up inside. And as he's scrambling out to the right, you're going to see Al Wallace, and he laid a hit on Donovan there. And who should have got pounded was Todd Pinkston for dropping that ball. That's an easy catch. Hit him right in the chest. A huge play. Really letting your quarterback down on that one. Second down and 10. Handoff is to Staley, and he is into Carolina territory, a gain of seven. When you talk to the Carolina Panthers, they will tell you our overall philosophy in this game to win it is to make Donovan McNabb throw the ball to beat us. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. Well, they know that they've got to control Donovan McNabb, whether he's throwing the football or he's scrambling. And you've got to remember that John Fox is very aware of Donovan McNabb. John Fox, of course, was a defensive coordinator for the New York Giants for five years from 97 to 2001. And he knows full well what Donovan McNabb's capable of doing. Third down and three. Handoff is to Staley. And it depends on the mark. Brought down right at the marker, and because of that, Bernie Kukar is going to call the change out. It is close, but I would have to say that for Andy Reid, if this thing ends up short, I think he's going for it. I think Andy Reid has made a decision. He's not leaving anything in the bag this year. He's going to go full out. A lot of people thought he was a little conservative in that championship game last year. But he can wait for the first controversial decision until later. Yeah, boy, I don't know. I don't know if you're Andy Reid go for it there or not at this point in the ball game only down seven points but fortunately for him he's not faced with that decision Staley got the first down and Buckhalter is back into the huddle for Philadelphia the Eagles down 14 to nothing here at home to Green Bay last week rally tied it won it in overtime McNabb it's his fullback. Pass is complete to John Ritchie, a gain of only one. Nice play by Dan Morgan, but on the other side, Todd Pinkston, off of this corner blitz, was thinking, what about me? That is about as open as you're going to see in the National Football League, but of course what you didn't see was play action going away. The safety back there obviously realizing the ball wasn't coming back side. Second down and nine. McNabb down the sideline for Pinkston. 
out of bounds. Anybody surprised so far that Carolina's played this way and has a seven to nothing lead? No, I'm really not, Joe. I mean, if you look at these two teams and how they match up going into this game and what the what the different strength levels were for both of these clubs, you know, Carolina really does not have that many weaknesses. I mean, they're pretty solid across the board. The one criticism would be the quarterback, but yet here Jake DeLome, he's had a phenomenal year. He's played great in the playoffs. I think coming in, we expected a great ball game. I think the only thing that surprises me a little bit is how well they've been able to throw it against this Eagles secondary and how well they played against the Blitz. Handoff is to Staley. Look at the drive by Staley. He has enough for a first down. Yeah, you know, I really believe that as well as Correll Buckhalter has played, if I'm in a championship game, that's the guy I want playing more than anybody else. Freddie Mitchell going to catch a nice block here on the outside, but for Deuce Staley, this guy has everything on the line in one game. I think he has the biggest heart of any running back that you will see all season. He fights harder than anybody after contact, and for me, in a championship moment, it would be Deuce Staley. Also, his final moments here at this field wearing an Eagles uniform. They hand to Buckhalter. And Buckhalter is down to the 32. I mean, conceivably, this is it. Perhaps. For a home game for Staley, for Vincent, and for Bobby Taylor. I mean, these are three major players, and that's the way the Eagles have played it the last couple of years during the offseason with the salary cap. Hugh Douglas, Sean Barber from a year ago, and they have made a lot of good decisions as you look back the last couple of years. Well, the one thing they've been able to do is they've, they've been able to avoid making the emotional decision. So where do these players stand? They don't know, but they anticipate they won't be back. This could be their last game here in Philadelphia. Pass is caught by Mitchell. Another Philadelphia first down, his first catch. The people's champ puts his belt on. Chris Jenkins going to come on a stunt right around the top. They're just going to go here and here and try and get some pressure on Donovan McNabb. But so far, that interior three of the Eagles been doing a great job. And Freddie Mitchell's starting to feel it. He's a guy that really was a disappointment here for many years. But after that fourth and 26 last week, something of a hero in Philadelphia now. He corrected Troy Vincent when he said, you're our hero. He said, no, I'm your savior. <laughs> nice low key comment. Blitz, McNabb is pushed down. And it was Mike Rucker who got through. Yeah, that time they brought the all-out blitz. You see Donovan McNabb on the ground. Slow to get up, but Carolina brought the all-out blitz. There was no safety in the middle of the field, clearly bringing more people than can be picked up. Donovan trying to get away from it, but Mike Rucker there to make the play. What a tremendous play because Deuce Staley got him on the ground, but he was able to leap over the top. Pretty good indication that Mike Rucker's knee feels pretty good, and Donovan McNabb is down. Looked at by the training staff. We'll take a break and tell you what happened after this. It's never wise to assume from the booth as to where the injury occurred, but it's it's awfully clear and it comes on a late hit by favors. This is unbelievable. I mean this is three seconds after the play and not only do you injure the quarterback you don't even get a penalty flag thrown. It's hard to imagine what the officials were watching out there to have not seen a hit that late take place and now you're going to take the marquee player in this game out on a play and a hit that happened three seconds after the play was over. Boyd Detmer takes over at quarterback. Last played in mop-up duty at Washington at the end of the year. Staley, the pass was behind him, and the Eagles are going backward. A loss of seven on that sack and a loss of three on that second down throw from Detmer. And you got to wonder how how Detmer feels right now. I mean, he's only prior to that, he's only attempted five passes all season long. Now Donovan McNabb coming back into the ball game. Going to see what he can do. Clearly a great sign of relief for these Eagles. But you also now have to wonder about his mobility. If he did stretch a hamstring or pop a groin or something like that, is he going to be the same Donovan McNabb that could run the way that he did a week ago? Third down and 20. Sets up and fires. Mitchell makes that tough catch over the middle. Now they're saying incomplete coming in from behind. Incomplete. That'll bring down 
fourth down and 20. The Eagles are arguing that it was a catch. Yeah, Freddie, he says that he caught it. He's, he's signaling to the sidelines, throw the red flag. I brought that one in. Andy Reid is, I'm sure, getting help from above as they look at the replay. Oh, he caught it. Well, the ball never hit the ground. We saw that it got loose, but clearly the ball never hit the ground. I agree with Freddie Mitchell. He did make the catch on that play. Certainly worth the challenge. And they're trying to, trying to talk Andy Reid into doing it now. Because it is a three-point play. If you get the completion, you send the field goal team out there. I think you need to challenge this one as no well. No question. Well, they just showed it on the big screen board here at Lincoln Financial Field. Philadelphia is challenging the ruling on the field. They are challenging it. I think we all agree that that ball never hit the ground. That's what Mitchell has been doing all season long for the Eagles, making tough catches over the middle. A review while we take a break in Philly. Bernie Kukar gives it a look under the hood. And just so you know, it's a difference in yardage, really. It wouldn't be a first down, but it would bring the field goal unit onto the field. As it stands now, fourth down back at the 33, the Eagles are prepared to punt. But remember, it has to be indisputable. Now, can you say absolutely that this ball, when it loosens, doesn't go on the ground? It's going to slide out of his hand. And I think that you can make a case that that ball did hit the ground and they do not overturn this. I know I'm in the minority up here, though. I think that's the better look right there. You can tell his, it looked to me like his left forearm After and elbow. the play, the receiver had the ball in one hand. It rolled over to the other. It never did hit the ground. It's a completed catch. Fourth down. There is no charge timeout. So it is fourth down, and it is Akers on the field now instead of Dirk Johnson, the punter. And Mitchell's been doing that all year. Yeah, the people's champ has done it once again. And you know, last week in a similar situation, he dropped that pass, but makes a key catch there in order to get this team in field goal position. Be a 41-yard drive by Akers. Both kickers during pregame warm-ups had difficulty kicking toward this end of the field. who has the most field goals and the best field goal percentage in team history is true. It's 7-3 Carolina with 2.56 left in the half. Wrapping the lower back of Donovan McNabb and we'll get a report from Pam Oliver in a moment. 2.56 remaining. Each team has all three of their timeouts left. Carolina has the lead with 2.56 left in the half. Akers keeps eyeing that ball. Make sure it stays on that tee. I wouldn't take my eyes off it either. Akers drills it. Smart will take it. Ron Smart is out of bounds up near the 35 yard line. Certainly one of those plays where you're going to bring it out after doing a double loop and catching the ball going backwards. You better get it past the 20. And he hate me, got it done. He hate me, just went 38 yards on that return. Decent field position for the Panthers with 2.48 left. It is 7 to 3, Carolina with 2.48 left in this first half. <laughs> Man is magically delicious. Got a Bengals fan here today. <laughs> How about that? This postseason with a lead, no time on the clock, winning with that field goal to end it in overtime last week to beat Green Bay. Crowd revs it back up. DeLone, a dangerous throw, and Wiggins has it go through his hands. 
Let's go down for a report and check in with Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe. Uh, the medical staff here at the Philadelphia Eagles has spent a great deal of time working on Donovan McNabb. He was pointing to the area just under his right side in an area of a rib. They do say he has some type of rib injury. He's going to come back and play. Right now he's throwing. He's trying to warm up, but I can saw him wincing in pain, and he's having a little difficulty breathing from the looks of things, but he's trying to work that thing out. Second down and 10 as DeLong stumbles, getting it into the hands of Foster. And the Eagles will spend a timeout. And Troy, I know you've had rib injuries as well as I have. And sometimes they don't hurt so much when they first happen, but the longer you're around, they start to tighten up. And especially for a quarterback, as you try and reach to make a throw, it's got to be pretty painful. Well, there's no question. You can see how uncomfortable he is trying to warm up on the sidelines. And yeah, I have had rib injuries in the past. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most painful injuries that you can have. And it is extremely difficult throwing the football with it. A lot like if you've got a back, low back pain, trying to get comfortable in the pocket and deliver the throw, no question it's going to affect him. A real tough guy has the admiration of his teammates. Handled a lot this season with the comments that were made on ESPN. He has persevered and has his team back in the NFC Championship trailing by four. Out of the backfield, it's Foster has blocking in front of him. Deshaun Foster short of a first down. Gain of six. Well, we have seen some big tackles already out of the Philadelphia Eagles. That time, Michael Lewis, who I think is really the unsung hero of this team. When everybody was falling down around him, Troy Vincent and Brian Dawkins and Bobby Taylor and all the veteran players that were out of this lineup, it was Michael Lewis who was making plays game after game and makes another big one there. I just never saw Deshaun Foster try to get going up the field to make an attempt to pick up that first down. Sauerbrunn drills one into the end zone. So the Philadelphia Eagles will have it at their 20. 218 left on the clock. An injured Donovan McNabb back to work with two timeouts left. February 22nd, the world's best drivers return to Fox for the Subway 400 at the Rock. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, and Tony Stewart lead the field for 17 weeks of high-speed thrills and excitement when NASCAR returns February 22nd with the Subway 400 right here on Fox. Our producer, Richie Zients, our director, Artie Kempner. Rich Basili, our technical director. And so many from this crew will head into the NASCAR season, and the three of us in the booth wish them the best of luck. 218 left in this first half. It's going to be really interesting to watch Donovan McNabb now. Does his game change, or is he still moving around? Is he still running the way that he did a week ago? Handoff is to Staley. And just like the Eagles started that final drive in regulation last week against Green Bay, they hand to Staley only this time instead of a big gain. It's only three. Yeah, and the reason it was not a big gain was because Chris Jenkins came off the block and he made the tackle. Otherwise, Deuce Staley had a lot of room to run. Chris Jenkins doing his work up front. Off his block, made the tackle. He's a pro bowler. 7-3, Cats. The beauty, the effort, the pain, the celebration of a January football game. The winner of this game goes to Super Bowl 38 to take on the New England Patriots. Staley again. First down and more. Hangs on to the ball out to the 40. And a timeout taken by Philadelphia. Well, and Carolina was anticipating pass on that play. They bring the linebackers blitzing up inside. You're going to see these guys here. They're blitzing up. Deuce Daly off the corner, and that's what opens up that lane. John Welburn doing a great job holding his block. You got Trey Thomas also, and they form the lane. A good call there by Andy Reid, allowing Deuce Staley to pick up that first down. Obviously, Carolina thought that they were going to come out throwing the football. 
And I think Carolina's thought is, let's see just how healthy Donovan McNabb is. They want to begin to apply some pressure, force him to move around a little bit, because certainly when you're playing with bad ribs to try and contort your body and make a throw on the run, it's going to be much more difficult. So now, typically the game plan is you want Donovan McNabb playing from the pocket, but I think now for Carolina, they'd like to see him make some moves and get outside the pocket and see what he can do throwing then. Staley, who had nine yards of carry against Green Bay, has seven a pop in this game against Carolina. Blitz coming, and down goes Donovan McNabb. Minter was coming on the blitz. Buckner was there first, and it's a sack for this Carolina defense. And the reason that Carolina feels that they can bring pressure is that they feel that on the outside with their corners that they can hold up. You're going to see the safety here coming in on the blitz, and they get pressure along with him and then they've got Brenson Buckner in there as well but because they can cover on the outside with these corners they're able then to bring linebackers and bring safety blitzes and Bobby Williams that time left one on one because of the coverage down the field able to, to he just blew it Staley and across the 40 knocked down at the 44 there's been two units that haven't gotten respect this year. The wide receiving core for the Philadelphia Eagles and the secondary for the Carolina Panthers going ahead to head. Under a minute to play, another blitz from Cousin. He's picked up. The pass is picked off by Manning. Ricky Manning, who had that first overtime interception in St. Louis, steps in front and gets it. Stepped in front of Thrash and the Carolina Panthers have it at their own 40. 47 seconds left and three timeouts. Well, the pressure coming again on a corner blitz, leaving one on one on the outside. And don't forget what Ricky Manning said during the course of this week. He said on talk radio, I'm definitely not impressed by their receivers. And at least thus far, he has backed it up. They have blanketed these Eagles receivers all day. Well, you see James Thrash come off that ball. It looked like he was expecting to be able to get down the field a little bit more before Donovan was going to put it up in the air. He got Ricky Manning turned around. But Ricky Manning got a clean sight on when McNabb was letting the ball go, and that's why he got the good jump for the interception. How aggressive do the Panthers want to be with 47 seconds left in the half? Coming on a blitz of the Eagles and an end around to Muhammad. Not much. Simon is the last to get him out to the 45-yard line, and Carolina will take a timeout, give it a couple of shots. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will have first-half analysis, highlights from the AFC Championship game, and an interview with Daryl Waltrip. And while we talk AFC, is there a better coach walking the earth than Bill Belichick? Well, I mean, what a job he's done. Yeah, I mean, he's done a great job all season long, and, and then once again, he's getting his team back into the Super Bowl. And, you know, you go back to what's happening in this ball game right now, and again, I don't think you can overstate it. On that last play, they do bring a blitz again with Terry Cousin off the edge. And as we move into this second half, I think for Philadelphia, in order to have some success, one, they're going to have to continue to run Deuce Staley a little bit more than what they have. But these wide receivers are going to have to be able to step up and beat the man-to-man -man coverage because right now, Carolina is, is handling them very well on the outside. How about the play by Ricky Manning, though? He also had the play last week stealing the ball away from Torrey Holt that set up the game winner there. They called it the biggest interception in the short history of the franchise. Foster with a spin move. That'll bring up third down at four. And this really surprises me, Joe, that, you know, I understand that John Fox kind of plays close to the vest, but if anything, Jake DeLome has shown the ability to lead his football team in two-minute offense and come away with some points, and they've got timeouts, they had good field position, and yet here they come out and they run the ball on first and second down. Sound the alarm. It's announcer cliche time. But this team really took the next step when the passing game, the Carolina Panthers, Advanced. You look at the history of Jake DeLong. 98 Saints allocate him to Amsterdam. Then in 99 to Frankfurt, the NFL Europe, where he wins a World Bowl title. He played in only six games prior to this year, mainly as a backup with the New Orleans Saints. Only two starts, and then taking over in the season opener at home against Jacksonville, he has been phenomenal. And he loves to go downfield. That's when he feels most comfortable. Third down and four. Penalty flag. DeLon throws it away. And it looked like there was some movement along the offensive line for the Carolina Panthers. All start. 
69 offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. It's on Jordan Gross. It's been a first round pick on a guy who they eventually believe will take over at left tackle. You know, it's interesting. You're talking about Jake DeLome, and he was playing in that NFL Europe, and he said, I was playing backup, and I'm thinking, oh, if I can't even be a starter in NFL Europe, what kind of chance do I have? Well, the guy playing in front of him was Kurt Warner. <laughs> and he said, I, and that guy, he looks pretty good to me. He said he kept telling his dad, really, dad, this Kurt Warner's pretty good. <laughs> Third down and nine. DeLome buys some time and fires. The pass dropped into the gut of Ricky Paul and then down to the turf. It's fourth down. Well, there's a good play by Troy Vincent. That time working against Ricky Paul, of course, the former Ram. But it's really the first real aggressive move we've seen from Troy Vincent, just planting his foot, coming back, and making a break on the ball. So maybe he's loosening up a little bit. Yeah, I just felt that that was a wasted opportunity by Carolina. They had a chance to try to come away with some points before the half, and they just failed to capitalize. Sauerbrunn. Knuckler. It will be tapped down just inside the 30 with 15 seconds remaining, and you don't expect Philadelphia to try to get too cute. We remind you that Fox Tomorrow, the phenomenon that changed music and television forever, returns for its third season. Appointment TV is back on Fox. Be there when American Idol takes the first look. Some of the very best, some of the very worst. American Idol, an all-new season, begins tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. And you see Steve Smith, he's upset, probably upset by the fact that they didn't trust Jake DeLome in his passing game to be able to go down and move the football. I've broken a few phones in my day as well with that kind of conservative play calling. Can you hear me now? McNabb is going to suffer another sack. And big Brenson Buckner is there to take it for Carolina. So much better with pressure this week as opposed to a week ago by this celebrated defensive line for the Carolina Panthers. And Brenton Buckner has come up huge here in the first half working against Bobby Williams. He's wearing him out. Already four Carolina sacks today. How many Eagles fans are saying it's happening again? One half of play remains here in Philadelphia. The winner goes on to Super Bowl 38, 7-3 Carolina. The Visa Halftime Report is coming up. J.B. Terry, Howie, and Jimmy right after this from your local Fox station. Donovan McNabb on the field. The Eagles will get the ball to start this second half. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe. Philadelphia Eagles head into the locker room looking very much the part of a concerned team. They came out the same way. Donovan McNabb trying to put on a brave face in the face of that rib injury. But I tell you, you can tell he's still quite stiff from that thing. Trainers say there's nothing new to report on that. John Fox very aware that McNabb is injured. He says, we're going to keep coming after him. He says offensively, too, Carolina passed too much in that first half. They've got to get back to their center, and that's running the ball. All right, Pam, thanks. Coy Detmer has been warming up, trying to get loose, get ready just in case, and we will find out right away who takes over at quarterback for the Eagles as they will get it. Thrash takes it from the 10. James Thrash. Nice move out to the 30 and beyond. A return of 22 yards. McNabb is headed off to work, and let's go back to the play that caused the injury. And the ruling was that McNabb was not down by contact, but you're going to clearly see that Michael Rucker is going to take off the shoe of Donovan McNabb. So there was contact. Now, Greg Favors doesn't know that, so he comes in and jumps on McNabb. But if the officials had seen that it was down by contact, would have been a penalty there, but none called. So that is the official word they played on. They're not initially ruling him down by contact, and now McNabb hands off to Staley. I would imagine we'll see plenty of Deuce Staley in this second half as he's ridden out at the 40 by Deion Grant. We look at the halftime numbers and the one that we highlight, Sacks. Carolina having only two a week ago at St. Louis, already four. Yeah, and I really believe that Philadelphia, they've got to get back to running the football. Deuce Staley in that first half, averaging over seven yards a carry, comes out there and picks up eight, nine yards on the first carry here of the second half. And they've got to be able to take some of the pressure off Donovan McNabb. Obviously, if you're going in and you're getting x-rayed, it is a concern. Triple. 
Second down and one. First down, Philadelphia. Deuce Staley. His legend will only grow, Donovan McNabb, if he can somehow lead this team back. They're only down seven to three, but the immediate history of this team is they'll hang around, they won't look great. And like what happened last week here against Green Bay, he caught fire, the team got hot, and they won it in overtime. And you know, ironically, it might actually play to their advantage. If it gets them back to a running game and Deuce Staley does get hot here in the second half, it will set up things for the passing game. And it's not really something that typically you see out of the Eagles, a real focused effort on the running game. It's all on the ground this time, it's Buckwalter. You got two. So on the other part of that, Joe, is if there's anybody who can play through an injury, I mean, it's Donovan McNabb. We've seen that over the years. Think back to last year when he broke his leg, and yet he continued to play against Arizona through the four touchdown passes and what he has endured through the, through the early part of this season with the various injuries that he's had. He's accustomed to playing through some pain. You just wonder how much the rib injury will affect him throwing the football. And I think you can see the pain in his eyes. I think that just looking at him, he just doesn't look like the same vivacious person that you typically see on the field. Blitz out of the backfield. Nice catch. Staley down the sideline. First down inside the 35, knocked out at the 34. This is what Carolina just has not had an answer yet. They bring linebacker pressure again inside. You're going to see these guys go, and nobody accounts. You're going to see Dan Morgan. He's trying to get over to cover Deuce Daly. He thinks Deuce Daly is going to stay in and block because they're bringing the linebackers. He does not. In essence, it was a hot route to do Staley and Dan Morgan couldn't get over there to cover him. But you come back after running the ball three straight times and then the play action then the some of the passing game starts to work and do Staley with another huge play. Hand off Buckhalter. Cramming it right at the Carolina defense a gain of nine and a good job there by Todd Pinkston on the outside blocking Ricky Manning which allowed him to get up inside of that block and pick up some key yards and Todd Pinkston has been much maligned throughout this season he's played very well here as of late but you see he's making key contributions in the running game as well and they're running right behind John Runyon John Runyon a huge guy against Julius Peppers and watching the film of the first game between these two I thought Runyon wore him out pretty good. Buckhalter strings it out, has a first down. And we've seen Philadelphia be able to get to the outside a few times now. Mike Rucker, the defensive end of that side, he's got contained. He's got to get up the field and make sure that he keeps everything to his inside. But Trey Thomas is able to get out and hook him. And then, of course, you've got John Ritchie, the lead blocker. But they're able to get on the corners right now. That's got to be a concern for Carolina. Well, you get the wide receivers cracking back on the outside and creating that edge. Now they're working on Freddie Mitchell. Buckhalter. A nice gain on first down of five yards. Peppers on the tackle. Well, that's a tremendous running play there because what you're seeing is once you establish the outside presence, and that time they come with a, an outside running look again, and then you cut back behind it, you get those fast linebackers, Dan Morgan, Will Witherspoon, and those guys really flowing to the ball. Then you cut back behind it, some nice running lanes. it away and McNabb was hit and hit hard by Minter. The whole stadium was watching that thing develop, held their breath as McNabb took the shot. Yeah, and you're going to see Todd Pinkston, Ricky Manning, he gets physical with him, which is the M.O. coming into this game. He throws him on the ground, and that's who Donovan McNabb was looking to get the ball to on the roll out to his right side. I'll tell you, Ricky Manning, for a rookie, understands this game, and the playoffs, that was holding. There's no question about it. He grabbed Pinkston's jersey and slung him to the ground, but in the playoffs, 
typically you don't get those calls like that. So Manning out there taking full advantage and beating up these receivers. And we saw how slow Donovan McNabb was to get off the ground. On third down, there's Manning again, another pick. Some miscommunication there with Pinkston. And Manning gets his second of the night. Well, there's no question that Ricky Manning has a knack for being around the football. He's playing him inside technique leverage. That's and I don't terrible. know what Pinkston That's was doing. That's terrible. Obvious miscommunication right there between Donovan McNabb and Todd Pinkston. 7-3 Carolina. It really looked like the Philadelphia Eagles at the start of the second half were coming out, making a statement, nine plays, 51 yards. It ends with another Ricky Manning interception. His third of the postseason, second tonight. First down, Carolina. They hand the ball off. Out across the 20 is Davis. A nice gain on first down of six yards. Todd Pinkston, the unpardonable sin right here. When you have a slant on, you have to stay that route no matter what. When he jumps back out to the outside, Ricky Manning with an easy pick, that is simply awful by a professional wide receiver. No question, Donovan McNabb thought he was going to run the slant route. It appeared that Todd Pinkston was running a slant and go. No excuses. You blew it. Second down and three. Tosses to Davis, and he runs ahead for a first down to the 29. And I thought it was interesting, John Fox's remarks coming out at halftime saying that we're throwing the ball too much. We need to get back to running the ball. They only threw it 11 times in the first half. Maybe that's too much for him. Well, they ran it 16 <laughs> times. I mean, clearly they were running the ball much more than what they were throwing the football, but here they come out on this possession. They're running the ball and picking up yards. Quick throw setting up a wide receiver screen for Smith. Pro Bowler is a rookie, is a punt returner, did as much as he could, got three. And I think, you know, when you talk about Steve Smith with his team and what he's done all season long, not only has he made big plays, but he's made big plays at big moments in games. And it certainly has been true the last couple of weeks. I mean, his yards per catch average is astronomical. He's created a lot of plays himself. And so on a play like that, you're just trying to get the ball into his hands as much as you can and see what his athletic ability will allow you to do. 69-yard catch for a touchdown to win it in double overtime last week at St. Louis. Second and seven to Sean Foster. Already has a fumble in this game, but his teammate, Jermaine Wiggins, picked it up that time. Here he hangs on for a three-yard pickup. Well, one thing that I do like that Carolina has done, of course, we talked about the injury of Stephen Davis and what he's gone through this week, but they've done a nice job of mixing in Deshaun Foster along with Stephen Davis and giving him necessary breaks over there on the sidelines. They haven't overloaded them, and you've got to believe that they're holding a little bit back in case they have to ride their horse in the fourth quarter. Third and three. Inside handoff to Hoover. Didn't get it. Fourth down. Ike Reese, their top special teams player, on the top special teams team in the NFL, having to start in place of Carlos Emmons, made the stop. And the Panthers loved that little cutback type run, and that time they did a run blitz with Mark Semino. He jammed up the hole and allowed Reese to come over and make the play. I think Carolina and their linebacker Ryan Allen is asking for a measurement and they're going to get it. They already have fourth down on the box. And it's fourth down. Andy Reid head coach Brad Childress offensive coordinator. And I'm sure half their thoughts are with the health of Donovan McNabb and how much they can ask him to do. He has been pasted the last two weekends. First by Green Bay and now again here tonight by Carolina.
Nearly blocked. Line drive punt into the wind. And it's down by Hoover out at the 36. Jake DeLome just pleading his case for a measurement. It was short. Ike Reese making a play to stop Carolina. Philly has it down four. The crowd has been quieted. They've taken out, but quieted by the play of the Carolina Panthers and the two interceptions. After a nine-play, 51-yard drive to start the second half. Movement along the line. We understand that Julius Peppers is out and on the sideline, and we'll try to get a report as to why. Ball start. 72 offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, the big thing right now, Joe, is that the Eagles have just got to take a deep breath and relax. I mean, they had a nice drive on that last possession, moving the football down the field, but these interceptions, and you just got to worry about this football team beginning to panic a little bit out here on the field. Tough to take a deep breath if you're Donovan McNabb with bad ribs. A lot of short breaths. Buckalter, patient, but nothing really opened up, and a gain of only three. Nice play by Dion Grant. The free safety coming up. I'll tell you, that was a big stop that last time, though, by the Philadelphia Eagles defense. You get a turnover down there, a real momentum changer, and they get the ball right back to their offense. Remember in the game last week against the Packers, it, they were down 14 to nothing, and essentially the Eagles defense held the Packers at just three points, essentially, for the last three quarters of that ball game. So we'll see if that one turns it. Second down and 13, and the pass to the sideline is broken up, but it was Howard there, stride for stride with James Thrash. Third down and long coming up. And really a nice job there by Reggie Howard, and really clear across the board. I mean, again, these DBs for Carolina continue to challenge the wide receivers. Ricky Manning there on the outside against Todd Pinkston, and Donovan McNabb on that play had some time finally to try to find a wide receiver, but they are coming up at the line of scrimmage. They're pressing these wideouts, and they are mauling them coming off the ball. And so far, nobody's been able to shake it. So much for the Carolina Panthers not having a good secondary. They're killing the Eagles right now. Third down and 13. McNabb guns it. It's in the air, and it's Manning again. His third of the night. Ricky Manning is down to the 37-yard line. Man, oh man, did Mike Miller lay a hit and caused that one. Manning was the beneficiary of it, but it was Mike Miller with a shot to James Thrash. Ricky Manning Jr. becoming Ricky Manning the third, his third of the night. Manning, three interceptions. Ty Law for New England, three interceptions on Peyton Manning. In the 24-14 AFC Championship game, the winner of this game moves on to beat the Patriots. Toss to Foster. Big pickup on first down as Deshaun Foster got eight. Well, what a week I'm having. The Saturday evening effort at the end of the first overtime, and then in this game. One, two, and this one fell into his lap. And remember, he wouldn't even have been in the game but for an injury to Terry Cousin. But he played so well when he was in there, they basically left him in as a starter. And boy, has that been the right decision. Foster changes hands, hanging on to the football as he is knocked out just inches shy of the 20 with a first down. Carrying the ball on the outside after breaking through the line just to protect it a little more. Well, that's what you got to do. He starts up inside, and then the ball's in his right hand. He moves it to his left side, the outside arm, to protect it. He already had one fumble earlier in the game, making sure that it doesn't happen again. Going back to Ricky Manning, had a chance to visit with him before the game, and he said, we're going after these wide receivers. We're going to challenge them. We're going after them, and they certainly have today. Foster and Davis out. Smart gets it. Rod Smart bouncing it outside. Even he on first down gets five. 
made the reference earlier and just so people know what we're talking about he hate me that was what was on his jersey as the world experimented with the XFL the one year experiment and now Rod Smart has had a pretty good year on special teams for Carolina second down and five. Jump ball. End zone. Penalty fly. Smith was there. There was a lot of contact. And it will be pass interference against Philadelphia. Good call to Lito Shepard with his hands all over Steve Smith going down the field. Didn't get his head turned around. Pass interference. 26 defense. Automatic first down. Well, Philadelphia tries locking up on the outside with Lito Shepard, and it's an underthrown ball again, Chris. They had an opportunity, if it was in the corner, to maybe come down with the catch, but because it is underthrown, that is the toughest thing for a defensive back to try to play. Now, Lito Shepard never got his head turned back around to locate the football. Matt Willig, an extra tackle checks in. He is eligible. As is Shane Burton. Toss to Foster. Foster fighting for the touchdown. What an effort. It looked like he was stopped three different times. And the second-year player who missed all of last year after tearing his left knee would not quit. And how many times do we hear people draw comparisons with him and Stephen Davis and say Stephen Davis is the guy, the power runner, Deshaun Foster is the one who wants to bounce it to the outside. Deshaun Foster here definitely getting out on the edge, but look at the power and explosion that he shows here carrying two, three, four guys with them to get the ball in the end zone. But that's a pathetic effort by the Eagles. I mean, that's four guys with their arms and their shoulder pads and their helmets all over him, and they can't get him on the ground. That was pathetic. 4-11 remaining in the third quarter. Casey makes it 14-3. The Carolina Panthers playing their game. Not surprised to be here. The Philadelphia Eagles and their fans have to think, uh-oh, is it going to be three in a row? The reaction by Ricky Manning, it's 14-3, Carolina. Ricky Manning, a 5'8 corner. They drafted him thinking he would be a very solid number three corner. He has stepped into the starting lineup, taking the place of Terry Cousin. And he may win defensively a championship for the Carolina Panthers with what he did a week ago in St. Louis. Three interceptions here tonight. And it's more than being in the right place at the right time. He's fought for a couple of those picks. And then Deshaun Foster good enough to get it into the end zone. And now Manning just to complete his long night here in Philadelphia is again going to hold as the wind is knocking the ball off the tee. John Casey. Well, one of the reasons why Ricky Manning was able to keep his job when Terry Cousins got hurt was because he showed an ability to make plays around the football, and never was that more true than in these last two games. Crash. Philly should end up with good field position. Out of bounds at the 38. Well, Donovan McNabb may be hurting, but still able to laugh and have a little fun with a former teammate. The pressure is now squarely on his shoulders to start making plays. 14 to 3, Carolina. Four man rush out of the backfield, Buck Alter. Out across the 41. Again, it's Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, I think the urgency of this matter is starting to kick in for Philadelphia. Their emotional leader, Brian Dawkins, just went down the line to a bunch of guys seated on the bench. He got in their faces, pointed his finger, and said, let's go, let's go, let's go, to about a half dozen guys. Joe? Well, right now, he is on the sideline hoping that his offense, led by Donovan McNabb, same team the trail at one point last week, 14-3. Get it going. Second down and seven. Staley. Good pressure with that front four, and Staley just wouldn't go down. Out to the 46, a gain of five. 
And you're right, Chris. Nobody runs with any more heart than number 22, Deuce Staley. And they really slanted right into that play. It was the perfect call defensively. Everybody was moving that way at the snap of the ball. And somehow Deuce just kept spinning in 360 and just kept going and made something out of absolutely nothing. But the one, the one thing I am a little surprised, though, we haven't seen more out of some of the tight ends for the Philadelphia Eagles. Last week, they were a major factor in getting Donovan McNabb on track, and so far today, not many balls thrown their way. On third down, McNabb over the middle, another drop, and there's your tight end. It's Chad Lewis. Well, maybe the penalty that's, flag comes in at the end of the play. Maybe that's why they don't throw to him. It's a hold against Philadelphia. That'll bring up fourth down. Holding, 72 offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. I know we talked about it coming in, Joe. You just wonder how a team's going to respond like Philadelphia when they get behind, when they have pressure. We see Trey Thomas as he holds Mike Rucker coming around the edge. But this team right now, we saw Brian Dawkins on the sidelines trying to get the team motivated. But clearly, they are facing a great deal of pressure now. Dirk Johnson on the punt. Good punt. No doubt this is with the wind as we play the rest of this second half. Everything the Eagles can do, but it's still into the end zone, and Carolina will have it at their own 20. It's all on the shoulders of Donovan McNabb. A frustrating night so far. A quarter plus left, 14 to 3, Panthers. Sunday, February 1st, college football's ultimate skills competition returns to Fox. The Capital One College Football All-Star Challenge with Heisman Trophy finalist Chris Perry and some of college's top players going head-to-head. -head. Find out who has what it takes to be named one of the most coveted lists in all of sports. As Howie Long announces his tough guys presented by the new Ford F-150. It all begins Sunday, February 1st at 12 Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific here on Fox. The offensive line is not allowed a sack today. Carolina defense is racked up four. They stay on the ground and they give it to Stephen Davis. Rayburn is in on the stop and Davis is out to the 24. You know, this offensive line really has, Joe, done a tremendous job, not only in this ball game, but all season long. And they've they've got a couple different players, you know, from where they were a year ago. Of course, Geno James, who is the annual backup, he comes in at left guard and they draft Jordan Gross. But these guys are extremely athletic. And Mike Mazur, their offensive line coach, has done a tremendous job of getting this team to play as a unit. And they're having another big game here. They deserve the credit. 26 sacks allowed. Over 2,000 rushing yards this season. Second down. Davis just fell down. We have gone too long, guys, without talking about the job John Fox has done. I mean, this was a franchise that two years ago was 1-15. in 15. They were completely flat. They had nothing going. His first year, they're seven and nine, and this year, 11 and five, and with a lead in the NFC Championship game. And the thing that he did more than anything else was he re rebuilt a defense that was horrendous, turned them into the number two defense in football, then came back this year and rebuilt the offense with Jake DeLome and Stephen Davis and drafting Jordan Gross. Amazing the turnaround in just two years. Third down and six. Blitz. Fourth down. Taylor was coming on a blitz, and DeLome just basically threw it away. Yeah, good decision there by Jake DeLome of recognizing there was nothing there. He was getting pressure. Don't take a chance backed up in your own side of the field. Just throw it away. A punt is not a bad thing. And Ike Reese is playing a tremendous game. He read that one all the way, had the coverage on the outside, and gave Jake nowhere to throw the football. Reno Mahe. Waiting for the punt from Sauerbrunn into the wind. It's a line drive, and Reno will let her roll. Out of bounds across the 35. They'll mark it at the 37. And this crowd is trying somehow to get behind their offense. Teams that have lost three straight conference championship games. Late 60s with the Raiders. 73, 74, 75 for the Raiders. 74, 75, 76 for the Rams. 80, 81, 82 for the Dallas Cowboys. 
But you know, I've seen an awful lot of magic out of this Philadelphia Eagles team. We saw it in Monday night in Green Bay. We saw it in the playoff game last week. They were down 14 to nothing. Donovan McNabb, bad rib or not, is not finished. Under a minute to go, third quarter. Buckalter cuts it up to the 40. Donovan McNabb missing six games last year with a broken fibula. Coming back, getting into the NFC Championship game. And all that's remembered from that game and that 27 to 10 loss was the 92 yard interception return for a touchdown by Rondé Barber. This year he injured his thumb, played for a month with a wrap on that thumb, and when he took that wrap off, October 26th against the Jets, his numbers in this offense jumped. Second and seven. McNabb throws behind Thrash. Wow. I think these receivers are shook up. They just are not playing very aggressively at all. Remember, it was Thrash that took the huge hit from Mike Minner, and they just aren't making very bold moves towards the football. Well, you see the throw, Chris. It wasn't a real good throw. Donovan had to slide in the pocket. Thrash expecting the ball out in front. Donovan throwing it behind him. But right now, I think there's no question that whatever injury he has suffered to his ribs, it is affecting him in the pocket, both handing the ball off as well as getting comfortable within it to make the throws. Blitz coming. McNabb all day. Over the middle, incomplete. Staley, the intended receiver, and again, McNabb ends up on his back. Gerard Cooper, an outstanding special teams player, is the one on top. Well, he got hit again. He got put on his back after this play, and you can tell he's just not comfortable with what he's seeing right now. And then he takes the hit right to the ribs. You see him slowly get up. There's no question that it's affected him, but Donovan, in spite of that, he's just not been able to get comfortable. He's not been able to see what the defense is doing to him and then deliver passes. But you know, Troy, how long was he back there? He was back there five or six seconds, and there's still nobody open down the field. Ugly punt from Dirk Johnson that will sport out of bounds at the 27. It took forever for McNabb to get off the field after another failed attempt. The defense for Carolina has been outstanding. Laying the lumber to these Philadelphia Eagles. We're through three quarters, and it's 14-3 Carolina. Fourteen to three after three quarters of play in Philadelphia Carolina on top and you have to wonder how much more they will go with Donovan McNabb just in so much pain and Detmer has been warming up during the entire break that might be all for Donovan McNabb who knows but he certainly hasn't been effective. Yeah he went over and he talked to Donovan McNabb and he got the word and basically ran over to start getting loose and I think that last shot has finally finished Donovan McNabb and this is just a whooping so far now I have no other way to put it the Carolina Panthers just laying the lumber to the Philadelphia Eagles the receivers their quarterback physically beating this team up. Deshaun Foster hit by Taylor gets away. Foster's had another good game on the heels of picking up the slack for the injured Stephen Davis a week ago. And we talked about John Fox and the job that he's done here. I think you can clearly see coming into the season, most people pick Carolina to end up last in their division. You heard so much about Tampa, even New Orleans, obviously Atlanta with Vic before he went down, and now here's Carolina one quarter away from it all. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. I think even after they beat St. Louis last week coming into this game, there's a lot of people who have not given them their due and thinking that they could come in here and win this ball game. But even if they go with Coy Detmer, these wide receivers for Philadelphia are going to have to start getting off the jam. And there's Steve Smith doing what the Eagle receivers have not done. Ball pops out. That's a fumble. And Philadelphia. Has it. Well, for all the fighting that this team has done, and Steve Smith does with the ball, that time he fights a little too long, and the ball gets ripped out of his hands. It was a great route. He got off the jam, runs a slant, makes about four people miss going across the field. 
And then just by fighting for a little bit of extra yardage, and his knee could have been down on that one, Troy. It was pretty close. Challenge flag. It's out. They just threw the red flag out. So John Fox wants Bernie Kukar to take another look. The question is, though, Chris, it looked like the ball may have been coming out prior to his knee going to the ground, and if that is the case, then it will be it will be ruled a fumble. Can't see there exactly where the ball. Well, Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field of a Certainly looked like his left knee was down. down. He was basically contact. walking on his knees as that ball was still in his left arm. Yeah, I know what Troy was saying, though. If it's starting to move before the knee hits, see the elbow is in there now, but it's not out, but it is moving a little bit. Now it's just hard to tell when that knee's down. I think that is yeah, think down, down by contact. Boy, another break for the Carolina Panthers as if they needed something else to go their way today. I think they're going to get the ball back again. I'm sure John Fox by now has word from above that they've got a better than average chance of getting that call on the field overturned. And he just about didn't get the flag out in time to challenge it. Philadelphia getting out onto the field, hustling onto the field, trying to get the ball snapped to keep them from getting the ball or get, keeping them from getting a chance to challenge the call. And Coy Detmer is on the field. So if it's the Philadelphia Eagles ball, then he will be the quarterback when they come back. And you have to remember what Coy Detmer did in really his only game last year. Remember coming in, I think it was a Monday night game against San Francisco, yeah. a game the Eagles absolutely had to win, and he was brilliant. He was as good as any quarterback we had seen that season and then ended up injuring his elbow, dislocating his elbow late in that game. They show the replay of it on the big screen, the scoreboard here at Lincoln Financial Field, and even these fans can't cheer for it. Getting a real good look of that left knee being down and Smith still having possession of the football. Now this is either a first down for Carolina at their own 46, or if the call stands, it's first down for the Eagles at the Carolina 43. And we'll find out here in a couple of seconds. After reviewing the play, the runner's knee was down by contact. It's first down Carolina at the 45 yard line. You think these Philadelphia fans like instant replay? Uh, no, not, not at the moment. They can't even argue too much. So it's first down, 14.06 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the ball is up. They put it at the 45. We had it at the 46. Either way, great field position for Carolina with a fresh set of downs. And clearly turnover is the story of this one so far as the Panthers have done all season or at least all through the playoffs not turning the ball over has been the difference. Handoff is to Foster. He has a fumble tonight but the Panthers recovered it. The Eagles have been plus 11 in the turnover ratio the last 15 games but tonight three Eagles turnovers on the interceptions by Manning and none so far for Carolina. Yeah, then that's what Carolina has done in these playoff games. They've done a great job. They came into the playoff with a minus five turnover ratio in the regular season. They were plus four coming into this game, so they've done a very nice job protecting the ball and creating turnovers, and that's why they've been able to win games. It's all set up for Carolina. They've got the two-score lead. They've got good field position, and they've got the running game against an Eagles team that struggles defending the run. Davis is two yards shy of the first down. And I'm a little surprised right now, Chris, that the Eagles are not coming with any kind of pressure. I know that they, they're expecting them to run the football, but at the same time, you got to start trying to force the issue a little bit, try to wreak a little bit of havoc in the backfield, create some turnovers. But right now, if you continue to let Carolina just methodically drive the football, you're going to have a hard time stopping them. I think they're a little bit afraid of their outside running game. That's where they really got burned in the first matchup. Maybe afraid to bring pressure right down the gut that they'll get out around them. Third and two. A pitch to Foster. What a play. First down Carolina. 
So now they do go outside, and Dan Henning, the offensive coordinator, who's had a tremendous year, calls the play that picks up a huge Carolina first down. Yeah, and Andy Kalu, the defensive end, he's going to collapse down on the ball right here, the defensive end. He comes down hard. And there's no linebacker scraping Nate Wayne trying to get out there in time in order to make the play to keep him from getting the first down. But boy, you start getting overly aggressive trying to come down the line, come down the line and tackle Deshaun Foster. Next thing you know, he's out on the edge. Eagles cannot give up a touchdown here. They have to at least hold to a field goal. Foster Davis running with his bad left quad. He's down to the 32, a gain of two. The good thing about the injury that Stephen Davis has is it really only impacts you, and I've had that hip flexor thing before, really only impacts you when you're going full out. And for a guy like Davis, he's much more of a sort of a power, find your hole, lower your shoulder kind of a guy. So I, I haven't seen it really impact him so much today. Is there any injury you I haven't had? Say, I've had them all, brother. <laughs> Anything you want to name. You've had rib injuries and hip flexors. I ever tell you about my hamstring? <laughs> <laughs> tell me a commercial break. Oh, right. well, we're about to have one because Carolina is going to take a timeout. They let it wind down. 11:05 remaining in regulation. You have to say regulation these days in the NFL playoffs. 14 to three. Panthers out in front. 14 to three. Carolina. 11:05 left. <laughs> See Donovan McNabb just needs help to get up off the bench. He's finished. Second down and eight. Davis got hit right at the line, got to the 30. And we look back on this game with Carolina coming in off their win in St. Louis. First points, 24-yard touchdown throw to Muhammad. Here's the hit that hurt the ribs of Donovan McNabb by Greg Favors. The hit by Minter, the third interception by Ricky Manning. And then his teammate Deshaun Foster wouldn't quit, kept plowing into the end zone. It's 14 to 3. Third and six. Play of the game right here. Really need a stop to keep it to a two-score game. Blitz. Davis hit in the backfield. Goes nowhere. Simino came through first as the Eagles finally did bring that blitz. And that brings up fourth down. As much as an all-out blitz as you will see, Mark Semino going to come right here up through the middle, and the pulling guard is going to get driven right back into the running back and disrupt the play. Well, and it kept Carolina from having an opportunity to try to kick a field goal. That was the idea, run the ball, try to pick up a few more yards. If not the first down, now they're forced to punt. Carolina Panthers did this to Philadelphia in the first quarter. Now Philadelphia returns the favor. So the punt from Sauerbrunn. Phenomenal punt. And that ball will be marked down at the nine, even though it looked like it was going out of bounds. It didn't look like Cooper, who was down there, was willing to let it take another bounce. Interesting to see whether or not the guy that downed the football reestablished himself back into the field to play. Got to have two feet inbounds, and I don't think that he did. I think this is going to end up coming back to the 20-yard line. That was Jared Cooper, and the shame of it is, is that he really didn't even have to touch yep. the ball. The ball was running parallel to the goal line. They had a tremendous bounce on the play. Cooper goes into the end zone, comes out, does not have to touch the ball. He does. And now I've got to believe that ball's coming out to the 20 yard line. You have to get both feet down just like a receiver on the boundary. Got it. You can go in that's OK but now you have to get both feet back in before you touch the football he's on the line there. Just before that right foot came down the left foot was down and remember the end line the is in the end zone an illegal touch. At about the eight yard line, right at the eight yard line. That'll be first down, Philadelphia. So that means on the field, they have called that Gerard Cooper did establish himself back in the field of play. The replay shows differently. We could have a challenge when we come back. 
Well, a lot unfolds before us. First of all, Coy Detmer is in a quarterback. Secondly, the Philadelphia Eagles will not spend their final challenge to challenge the ruling on the field in the spot of the football. They marked it at the eight instead of taking it at the 20. It is a reviewable play. Gerard Cooper did have to get both feet back into the field of play. It all is a moot point now because a play has been run, and instead of taking it at the 20, the Eagles were content with it at their own eight. Well, and you kind of wonder why the Eagles chose not to challenge this call because clearly it would have been ruled in their favor. There's no question that Jared Cooper does not get both feet in the field of play and reestablish himself. They would have had the ball on the 20 yard line. Essentially a 13 yard non challenge. Blitz. Detmer flips it forward to an ineligible receiver. That's Bobby Williams. And a guy who threw only five passes during the regular season, Coy Detmer, is the guy in charge of trying to lead this Eagles comeback. Yeah, ineligible man, Bobby Williams, touching the ball. Obviously, he can't do that. And then. You just got to kind of wonder about Coy Detmer and how much work does he get during the week of practice leading up to a ball game. Typically the backup quarterback does not get any reps and he hasn't played basically all season long. Yeah but I don't really blame Coy Detmer for throwing it to Bobby Williams the way these other receivers have been playing out here. Well, Give he, somebody else a shot. I would too. He got a little separation didn't he. Yeah. <laughs> We've been sitting over there watching these guys getting beat up all game long. There are two fouls on this play. Hands to the face on top of it with a defense. Illegal touching. Number 66 offense. We got illegal hands to the face. 21 defense. Those penalties offset. Second down. So there's a break for Philadelphia. They get Cousin again. Yeah, they get him again. They got him earlier in the game. You're right, Joe, against... Freddie Mitchells, we're going to see. I, well, I'll tell you what, I didn't see anything. Well, at no time can you, quote unquote, jam a receiver up to the face. And in the estimation of this officiating crew, that crossed the line. So instead of a long third down, it's second down again for Philadelphia. And they run it with Buckhalter. And Buckhalter has a Philadelphia first down. But now a minute later and the clock's still running, they're back to where they would have been had they challenged the play. Well, that, and they've got to be careful. They cannot continually run the football. That's what I say. These wide receivers, they've got to step up. One of them has got to be able to make a play. Coy Detmer's going to have to find one of them, but they are going to run out of time if they think they're going to be able to drive this ball twice running the football. Detmer fires and the pass caught by Mitchell. First down, Philadelphia, after the 32. And that's probably the guy they should be working more. I mean, they're going to their cover two man, so the corners are getting safety help on the outside. Terry Cousin is locked up one-on-one -on -one with Freddie Mitchell, and Freddie Mitchell's been one of the few guys for this offense that's been able to make plays. A little hurry-up approach by Philadelphia. Staley with a penalty flag coming in at the end of the play gets it up to the 35. The Eagles indicate it's against Carolina. Ooh. Face mask and it's the personal foul variety 15 yards. Personal foul grabbing and pulling on the face mask 30 of the defense 15 yards from the end of the run first off. That takes it all the way up to midfield. Good call, too, by the officials. And, Troy, I think that the Philadelphia Eagles get the need to get some different guys in this ball game. I would put James Thrash on the bench. He's not very good against bump and run. Maybe get Greg Lewis in the game. Maybe even a Reno Mahe, a very quick wide receiver type. Let him try and make some plays Another against Another blitz, and Pinkston was looking for it late. A penalty flag comes in, covered by Howard. This could go either way, and it's against Philadelphia. Pinkston did not get his head around. And that's a good call, too, Joe. You're going to see, again, locked up, one-on-one, -on -one, Reggie Howard. And Reggie Howard has a chance to come down with this ball on an interception. Todd Pinkston really did about all he could do to try to break up what would have been an interception. There certainly wasn't a ton of contact. And while Howard popped up shocked, there was a flag, thinking it might be on him. 
Pinkston didn't do a whole lot to warrant offensive pass interference. Well, how much confidence does John Fox and Mike Turkovac have in these defensive backs in that here they are with seven and a half minutes in the game up 14 to three and they're still locking up one on one on the outside. Handoff is to Staley. Doing all he can, but now second down and long after a gain of four and this crowd saying, let's go. And they're right. But you know, for the Carolina Panthers defensively, think about it. In the playoffs, they shut down the Dallas Cowboys receivers, and they have three good players. Then they go in against the St. Louis Rams and do a good job there. Compared to those two teams, the receivers on the Eagles are not even in the same ballpark. Second down at 16. Detmer looking right, fires. Thrash cannot adjust to it. Who's on him? Ricky Manning, who's had an all-world night. They tried throwing the fade stop on the back shoulder of James Thrash because they cannot get down the field on these guys. Ricky Manning again locking up over the top. Boy Detmer trying to throw it on his back shoulder. And you can just see the confidence that these guys are playing with. Ricky Manning having an outstanding game today. And what do they say? It ain't bragging if you back it up. And Ricky Manning said that these Eagles receivers were no match for him, and he has been absolutely right. Third down and 16. Two for 10 on third down tonight of the Eagles. Detmer needs a big throw. Guides it. Pass is caught. Lewis wrestled down shy of a first down, but it certainly makes the decision a lot easier to go for it on fourth down. The ball is inside Carolina territory. At the 42, they need two yards. Yeah, there's no decision to be made here. They're going for it. I think they're going to burn one of their timeouts, though. They're about that either. Two timeouts remaining. Fourth down and two for the Eagles when we come back. They've been talking all week around here about a fourth and 26 a week ago against the Green Bay Packers. It's fourth down and two. And Coy Detmer is the guy trying to help these Eagles pick up a fresh set of downs as they trail by 11. Detmer fires wide open as Lewis, the tight end. Chad Lewis, a leap and out of bounds with a first down at the 18. Looked like the Eagles were trying to create a pick situation over on the outside for Chad Lewis. They were with the bunch formation at the top. Lewis going in motion and then jumping back to the outside and maybe even his guy blitz. It looked like Dan Morgan coming on the blitz may have been responsible for covering on the outside. There's no question one of the two linebackers that came was responsible for Chad Lewis. Again, they're under the impression that Chad Lewis is going to stay in and block. First down Philadelphia. Depper dumps it off incomplete. Cousin. Terry Cousin, the player who got his hands on it. So far, when the Eagles have the ball, the leading receiver has been Ricky Manning. He has three receptions, interceptions for Carolina. Staley has three, and Mitchell has three. That's it. Nobody has stepped up in the receiving core for the Eagles. Well, and the big thing right now, because of that fourth down conversion, the Eagles have gotten themselves in field goal range. So if nothing else on this drive, if they're able to make it 14-6, it then becomes a one possession game. Greg Lewis is in the game. Denver fires. Pass is complete. Mitchell wasn't touched, so he gets up and gets a couple extra yards and, more importantly, gets out of bounds. Boy, we've just seen so many games with the Philadelphia Eagles where you think it's over, you think it's done, and, and it's not. And they come with a corner blitz there. Nice read that time by Coy Detmer to be able to get up and get that play out of bounds. Third down. Detmer over the middle, intercepted. Another interception for this Carolina defense and the guy who has been working so hard in the middle, Dan Morgan, comes away with it. He did not have one the entire season. 
And with 5-16 remaining, the Carolina Panthers take over and may, may ride to Houston for the Super Bowl because of this. Well, Shane Burton gets pressure on Donovan McNabb, and he tries forcing it in there. And Dan Morgan right there to make the interception. 12 tackles and a pick for Dan Morgan. 4 turnovers by Philadelphia, 3 interceptions by Manning and 1 by Morgan who has just been flat out worn out in the middle. 12 tackles and interception. And he hands the ball back to his offense and Jake DeLone. Toss to Davis. And Davis a terrific move by just basically laying down and staying in bounds. Remember the situation was third and three and Deuce Staley instead of hooking this up right in front of Dan Morgan decides to ad lib a route just like Todd Pinkston did earlier in the game and it's going to cost another Eagles quarterback another interception. I don't know what these Eagles receivers are doing out here today but they are really screwing up this game. Uh, now it comes down to this Eagles defense. Clearly they know what they're going to get. They're going to get a heavy dose of run and only run as Carolina tries to milk this clock down. Davis stays in there 1400 yards during the regular season. More sure handed with a football. A gain of two and the Eagles have to spend their second time out. They trail by 11. Fox tomorrow the phenomenon that changed music and television forever returns for its third season. Be there when American Idol takes the first look at some of the very best and some of the very worst. American Idol, an all-new season beginning tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. I'll tell you what this game reminds me of is when the New England Patriots played the St. Louis Rams in the Super Bowl. They went out and they got incredibly physical with the wide receivers, beat them up at the line of scrimmage. When they had an opportunity, delivered a knockout blow down the field with a big hit, and it just seemed to intimidate the Rams a little bit. Of course, they did come back late in that game, got a few things going, but the physical presence of these cornerbacks and safeties of the Carolina Panthers and this much maligned secondary clearly has been the difference in this game. Second down and eight. Toss to Davis. And the Eagles spend their final time out. Third down coming up. For Carolina, you look at the combination of Peyton Manning and Ricky Manning. Peyton threw four interceptions for that terrific New England defense. 24-14 victory, and Ricky, three interceptions tonight after setting up the game-winning drive with an interception at the end of the first overtime last week in St. Louis. We know that the New England Patriots are in the Super Bowl again. They took a year off, but they're back. Belichick looked ticked. <laughs> what a job he has done with that defense, with that entire team. And Tom Brady still probably doesn't get the credit he deserves as a top flight quarterback. He's back in the Super Bowl in Houston in two weeks. Well, he'll get all the credit he deserves. He goes out and he wins another Super Bowl this year. And another guy that's going to get a lot of credit as well, finally, is Jake DeLone. They go on to win this ball game. And Every week it seems like people want to put the pressure on him and want to wait and see if he's going to deliver. And for the most part, <laughs> each and every week he has. Third down and six. The Eagles desperately need a stop. Out of timeouts. Davis. The Eagles force a punt. Jake DeLone told us early in the season, I'm sure no defensive coordinator has ever come into a game with us and said we need to stop 17. That's Jake DeLome's number. That may change because this guy and the passing game is a lot better than it gets credit for with Carolina. Well Jim Johnson did come into this game and say he didn't say we need to stop Jake DeLome but what he did say is we need to stop Steve Smith. So he clearly recognized what these Carolina Panthers had been able to do over recent weeks throwing the football. Lido Shepard is waiting for this punt from Sauerbrunn. Shepard on the move back from the 10. Eagles need a good one, another fumble. Philadelphia back on top of it. Quentin Michael was there to fall on top. 
and the Eagles will have it inside their own 20 needing two scores no timeouts and under three and a half minutes to play. You know, to follow up on what you were talking about, Chris, about these defensive backs, and, you know, they were so maligned throughout the season and that they couldn't hold up their end. There was so much talk about the front seven and them being the strength of this defense, and you look over the last six, seven ball games where this secondary has come and the job that they have done, there's no question, particularly today, that they are the reason that they've been able to win this football game, assuming they go on to do that as much as this front seven for this defense. Detmer has time down the middle behind Freddie Mitchell. You think about the secondary guys. Terry Cousin released twice, waved once. Reggie Howard was released once, waved once. But they had that difference maker, the rookie Manning, slip into the starting lineup. And that group as a whole with a very good safety combination, especially with Minter, has been outstanding. Well, their safety combination, you're right. They've been strong all season long, and it was just a matter of those corners starting to develop and mature, and they've done that, and John Fox showed confidence in them again in this game. Detmer off his back foot, throws, and the pass dropped. Well, Pinkston again, and now a penalty flag comes in very late. It'll be a hold, so an automatic first down and five-yard penalty. And I guarantee you somebody on the Eagles side is saying finally these guys have been mauling us all day long and we finally do get a call but this is the playoffs and that's the way it's going to be called. Holding 24 defense five yard penalty automatic first down. Would have been the sixth drop of this game by the Eagle receivers. I guess. So a first down, but the ball is at the 24-yard line. And only 3.15 on the clock. Corey Detmer to Staley. More physical play from this Carolina defense. It'll be second down. And there's probably people at home wondering why they're doing play action. There's no question they're not going to run the football here, but that gives them the best protection. And even having said that, Boy, Detmer has still got people in his face. Over the middle again. Wide open is Lewis, and he's down inside the 45. You know, it's so amazing that that was where they thought they could take advantage of this Carolina defense, over the middle of the ball, working against the linebackers, and they just never did it this entire ball game. Maybe they'll try and focus there now. Two and a half to play. Blitz. Detmer's hit as he let it go, and Pinkston, with the umpire in his way, <laughs> drops it. Now Pinkston's going to blame the uh, umpire. You know, he's, well, got to blame somebody, I guess. I mean, Coy Detmer is back here again. They bring pressure and expose these defensive backs, and Coy does a great job of just getting the ball out. It's blocked, apparently. Todd Pinkston can't see the ball coming because he's running behind the umpire there. Boy. Everything that can go wrong for this Eagles team so far has gone wrong. So there is drop number six, second down and 10, 2.23 to go. Blitz again. The Panthers are not laying back, and they get another sack at midfield. They keep coming, and they keep getting home. A loss of eight and the fifth sack of the night. Joe, this is really amazing what John Fox and Mike Turkovac, the defensive coordinator, are doing. You're going to see the safety here coming all the way up on the blitz, and they're just bringing everybody. They're not worried about the Eagles hitting anybody down the field. They're not playing conservative. They've stuck to their game plan the entire day. This could be the final play before the two-minute warning, and it's an incompletion. The crowd wants a flag, so do the Eagles, and they won't get it. 2.04 remaining. And it's fourth down and 18. And I think Freddie Mitchell's a little bit hurt, but what we're seeing now is whether it's a wide receiver working against a safety or what, these guys can't get open. There was as much open space in the middle of the field that time for Freddie Mitchell to work, and he is a wide receiver working against a safety, Deion Grant, and they still can't get open. So it's not just the corners that are blanketing these guys. No team has ever lost home 
back to back conference championship games. The Eagles in danger. Here's another blitz. They're still coming. Pinkston. A leap incomplete. There are no penalty flags, and the Carolina Panthers will take over, and they are going to be headed to Super Bowl 38. They'll just be able to take a knee and run this clock out, and it's absolutely amazing to me that down after down, you know what Carolina's going to bring, and Philadelphia couldn't block them up, and they couldn't get the ball to a receiver. Two-minute warning in Philadelphia. It's 14-3, to Carolina. That. Sam Mills, it's got to be an emotional time over on that sideline. We talked about it earlier. Diagnosed with cancer in the small intestine in August. Linebackers coach was there late in his career, made his name with New Orleans. A classy guy, and he has persevered this season. He and Mark Fields diagnosed with Hodgkin's good, no, disease good, in August. Be good, be good, be the good. honorary captains. And Andy Reid knows this feeling all too well. It's 14-3 right, to three Carolina. Philadelphia without any timeouts remaining. And it appears that John Fox in his time as defensive coordinator for the New York Giants and head coach with the Carolina Panthers will up his record guys to 10 and 3 taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. And, and you know I'm sure New England's going to be favored in the Super Bowl but think about what the Carolina Panthers have done now. They score 29 points against the number one defense in football, the Dallas Cowboys. They go in and knock off the St. Louis Rams, who had won 14 in a row at home. And then they come in here and easily, physically manhandle be good, be good. the Philadelphia Eagles team in this stadium in the NFC Championship game. And they do it almost casually. And how about Jake DeLome? Jake DeLome coming into this game when he was talking about the other quarterbacks, Donovan McNabb, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. All in the championship game, they asked him about it. He says, I'm the other guy. I want to get to where they're at. Well, tonight, there's 30 starting quarterbacks sitting at home wanting to get to where Jake DeLome's at, and that's Super Bowl 38. The Carolina Panthers will be able to take their name off the list of NFC teams who never made it to the Super Bowl. Arizona, Detroit, New Orleans, Seattle. Carolina was on that list. They are on that list no more. And Chris, you mentioned it. We've learned from Danny Sheridan of USA Today that the Patriots will open as a seven point favorite in the Super Bowl as they await their date in Houston with the Carolina Panthers. I don't think that concerns the Carolina Panthers too much. They've been underdogs since day one, since they were down 17 to nothing on opening day against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just doesn't make any difference to these guys. So John Fox and the Panthers come in to Philadelphia and with Jake DeLong calling the signals handing off to Foster and Stephen Davis with his efforts the efforts of this defense. The Panthers are going to the Super Bowl and let's go down to Pam Oliver. They sure are going to the Super Bowl Joe and a large reason for it number 17 here Jake DeLong what's up with that you guys are going to the Super Bowl in Houston you must be thrilled. Yes we are you know we uh, we played together as a team tonight defense played lights out offensively we did a great job the offensive line deserves all, deserves all the credit in the world uh, I didn't get touched but maybe once tonight uh, Steve and Deshaun all the guys ran hard it's a huge team win and that's what this is about you know the Patriots are going they're a great team and we think we're a good team you know it'll be a tough matchup. What are you thinking as you head into the Super Bowl your rags to riches story the guys were retelling the story about being behind Kurt Warner and saying dad I don't know if this you know if I can overtake this guy but you did more than that you took a hold of this team and you're taking him to Houston. Well it's nice that we're going you know I, I would love to do what Kurt Warner has done and, that, and that's the win one you know that's the next goal uh, it's easier said than done uh, I'm gonna try not to think about the Patriots tonight so I can at least get some sleep I don't want to worry about that defense just yet but uh, this is just great we're gonna enjoy this this is unbelievable. You're gonna need every sound bite you got in you for the Super Bowl by the way let's go back upstairs to Joe <laughs> only two starts in his career coming into this season congratulations to Jerry Richardson and the Carolina Panthers Jake DeLome from Brobridge Louisiana the Cajun not only played played well he and the Panthers are going to the Super Bowl much more coming up after this break